फॉलिक्यूलोजीनेसिस ऊसाइट ग्रोथ अकर्स इन द ओवेरियन फॉलिकल ड्यूरिंग द ग्रोथ ऑफ ऊसाइट फॉलिकल्स ऑल्सो ग्रो इन डिफरेंट फेजिस दिस इज कॉल्ड फॉलिकुलर ग्रोथ और फॉलिक्यूलोजीनेसिस इट स्टार्ट ड्यूरिंग द इंट्राइटर एंड लाइफ एंड कंटिन्यू स्टिल ओव्यूलेशन इट अकर्स ड्यूरिंग ईच मैंस्टुअल साइकिल ड्यूरिंग ईच मैंस्टुअल साइकिल अ नंबर ऑफ फॉलिकल्स स्टार्ट ग्रोइंग बट ओनली वन डोमिनेंट फॉलिकल फाइनली मैच्योर्स एंड रिलीज इज द ओवम एंड अदर अंडर गो डी जनरेसन दैट इज नोन एज एट्रेसिया अबाउट नाइंटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंटेज ऑफ फॉलिकल्स प्रेजेंट एट द बर्थ अंडर गो एट्रेसिया देर आर थ्री फेजिज ऑफ द ओवेरियन साइकिल प्री ओव्यूलेटरी फेज ओव्यूलेशन एंड पोस्ट ओव्यूलेटरी फेज इन द प्री ओव्यूलेटरी फेज द फॉलिकल्स आर गोइंग थ्रू डिफरेंट डेवलपमेंटल स्टेजिस अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट दे आर नोन एज डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फॉलिकल्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द प्राइमोडियल फॉलिकल कन्वर्टेड टू प्राइमरी फॉलिकल लेटर इट विल कन्वर्टेड टू सेकेंडरी फॉलिकल टर्सरी फॉलिकल एंड ग्राफियन फॉलिकल सो दिस इज द ओवेरियन साइकिल मेनली इट हैव थ्री फेजिस प्री ओव्यूलेटरी फेज ओव्यूलेशन एंड पोस्ट ओव्यूलेटरी फेज सो स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द प्री ओव्यूलेटरी फेज प्राइमोडियल फॉलिकल सो हियर द प्राइमोडियल फॉलिकल इज द फंडामेंटल रिप्रोडक्टिव यूनिट ऑफ द ओवरी इट इज फॉर्म इन द फिटल ओवरी सो प्राइमोडियल फॉलिकल इज फॉर्म इन द फिटल ओवरी इज प्राइमोडियल फॉलिकल कंसिस्ट ऑफ द प्राइमरी ऊसाइट इन द प्रो फेज ऑफ द फर्स्ट मियोटिक डिविजन दैट इज कवर्ड बाय अ सिंगल लेयर ऑफ स्पिंडल सेप फ्लेट सेल्स कॉल्ड ग्रेन्यूलोजा सेल्स सो हियर इज प्राइमोडियल फॉलिकल दैट कंटेंस द प्राइमरी ऊसाइट इन विच द मियोटिक डिविजन और द फर्स्ट मियोटिक डिविजन इज एरेस्टेड इन द प्रो फेज सो दैट इज द प्राइमरी ऊसाइट इट इज सराउंडेड बाय और इट इज कवर्ड बाय अ सिंगल लेयर ऑफ स्पिंडल सेप सेल दैट इज नोन एज ग्रेन्यूलोजा सेल्स सो दीज आर नोन एज ग्रेन्यूलोजा सेल्स और फॉलिकुलर सेल द ग्रेन्यूलोजा सेल्स प्रोवाइड न्यूट्रिशन टू द ओवम एंड ऑल्सो सीक्रेट ऊसाइड मैच्यूरेशन इनहिबिटिंग फैक्टर दैट कीप्स द ओवम इन द ई मैच्योर स्टेट टिल द प्यूबर्टी प्राइमरी फॉलिकल Granulosa cells become columnar and undergo mitotic division to form multi-layer stratum granulosum. So here the granulosa cells become columnar. So here you are saying that is the columnar granulosa cells, and it undergo mitotic division to form multi-layer stratum granulosum. Oocyte enlarges to about twenty micrometer in size. Zona pellucida, a membrane that appears consisting of glycoprotein between the granulosa cells and the oocyte. So here you are seeing the membrane that appears. It is known as zona pellucida. It's between the oocyte and the these granulosa cells. Due to this, the follicle is known as multilaminar primary follicle. Due to this development of zona pellucida, the primary follicle is known as multilaminar primary follicle. Secondary follicle, granulosa cells undergo further proliferation. So, granulosa cells undergo further proliferation. Oocyte further increase in size up to hundred micrometer. Thicca folliculi or follicular sheath is formed outside the basal lamina. So, this is known as basal lamina. and outside the basal lamina thicca folliculi or follicular sheath is formed by the spindle shaped cell from the stoma of the cortex inside the ovary the thicca folliculi consists of thicca interna and thicca externa thicca interna it is the inner rim which is secretory in nature it is the outer rim of thickly packed fibers and spindle shaped cells so this type of structure when form in the primary follicle now it is known as secondary follicle now the tertiary follicle granulosa cells start secreting follicular fluids this causes the cavity to be formed in the stratum granulosum which is called antrum or follicular cavity so here the granulosa cells that start secreting the follicular fluids so these are the granulosa cells so this granulosa cells start secreting the follicular fluid that is accumulated 
and the cavity has been formed in the stratum granulosum that is known as follicular cavity or the antrum the fluid filled in the antrum is called liquor folliculi which also contains the estrogen the granulosa cells continue to proliferate and the size of follicle is increased the granulosa cells continue to proliferate that may increase in number and size and everything and the size of the follicle has been increased now the graafian follicle after seventh day of sexual cycle one of the tertiary follicle increase in size in response to gonadotropins these are fsh and lh and forms the mature follicle that is known as graafian follicle or antral follicle or vesicular follicle after the seventh day of sexual cycle one of the tertiary follicle under the effect of fsh and lh are matured and it is known as graafian or antral or vesicular follicle size of the follicle increases markedly to about 2 to 5 mm antrum becomes larger theca interna becomes more prominent so that is the theca interna that becomes the more prominent so there is also increase in the estrogen secreting cells from the theca interna and formation of secondary oocyte once the secondary oocyte has been formed the first meiotic division has been completed as per the oogenesis now the structure of mature ovum that is the oocyte here it is the antrum the structure that is known as corona radiata and the oocyte attached with the this type of cells granulosa cells this portion it is known as cumulus oophoran and here it is the zona pellucida this is known as zona pellucida all right so that is the structure or the histology of the mature ovum so now the second phase of the ovarian cycle that is the ovulation the release of secondary oocyte from the ovary and it occurs at the 14 days after the onset of menstruation and it is caused by the lh surge what is lh surge that means highly increase in the luteinizing hormone it occurs in response to elevation in the plasma estradiol concentration in the mid cycle and secondly it is also due to the ovulatory peak of fsh follicular stimulating hormone there is 2 to 3 fold increase in the secretion occurring in 2 days prior to ovulation is thought to be stimulated by the progesterone so follicular stimulating hormone increases the granulosa cell luteinizing hormone receptors so after the 48 hours of the graafian follicle the ovulation of the oocyte or the ovum occurs steps of the ovulation there is 6 to 10 fold increase in luteinizing hormone that peaks 16 hours before the ovulation lh or luteinizing hormone causes mainly progesterone secretion now here the steps how the ovulation process has been occurred so luteinizing hormone when increased or the lh surge it causes the release of follicular steroid hormones progesterone in turn the progesterone stimulates the release of proteolytic enzymes and the effect of these proteolytic enzymes on the follicular wall the follicular wall becomes weak and on the second hand this progesterone also causes the follicular hyperemia and prostaglandin secretions and due to this there is plasma transudation inside the follicle so here the two main thing has been happened the follicle has been swelled and the wall of the follicle has been weakened and at the point there is stigma has been formed what is stigma this type of follicle and that is the stigma here it is the ovum so due to this increase in the pressure inside the follicle and the wall of the follicle has been weakened so that the degeneration of the stigma and all these things simultaneously causes the rupture of the follicle and once the graafian follicle has been ruptured the evagination of the ovum has been takes place so ovum is released in the abdominal cavity towards or just near to the fimbriated end of the fallopian tubes so this is the process or the mechanism of ovulation
now how can we determine the time of the ovulation so there are few simple methods to find out the ovulation time at the time of ovulation there is rise in basal body temperature by 0.5 degree celsius this is the due to the effect of progesterone second method from the hormonal excretion in the urine and product of estrogen like estron estradiol and 17 beta estradiol increases to the peak in the urine at the time of ovulation so if we find out this increase levels of estron estradiol and 17 beta estradiol in the urine then we can say that the ovulation has been occurred from the hormonal levels in the plasma lh and estrogen levels are increased and fsh level is decreased at the time of ovulation one more thing progesterone level is increased after the ovulation and the fourth method is by the ultrasound scanning now what is the importance of determining the time of the ovulation it helps in the family planning the life span of the ovum is about 72 hours if we know the time of ovulation then we can plan both conception and contraception now the post ovulatory phase it is the constant period of 14 days after the ovulation now what happened the ovum left the graafian follicle so first formation of corpus hemorrhagicum after the ovulation the graafian follicle collapses and it filled with the blood so now the graafian follicle that filled with the blood it is known as corpus hemorrhagicum now the second formation of corpus luteum the granulosa cells and the theca cells of the follicle lining begin to proliferate the clotted blood is rapidly replaced with the yellowish lipid rich luteal cells this process is called luteinization and the total mass it is known as corpus luteum and for the formation of this corpus luteum the luteinizing hormone or lh is responsible now in the corpus hemorrhagicum whatever the blood is present that has been clot and this blood has been replaced by the yellowish lipid rich luteal cells and the granulosa cells and theca cells of the follicle begin to proliferate so all this combinedly form the yellowish structure that is known as corpus luteum formation of corpus albicans if the fertilization or pregnancy doesn't takes place then after the 24th day of the sexual cycle the corpus luteum begins to involute or regress eventually it is replaced by a whitey scar tissue that is known as corpus albicans so that is how the graafian follicle after the ovulation has been converted to corpus hemorrhagicum corpus luteum and lastly corpus albicans now how these hormonal levels changes during the each phase of the ovarian cycle so first in the follicular phase or the pre ovulatory phase hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone and this stimulates anterior pituitary gland to release fsh and lh and it having the effect on the ovary the ovary releases the estradiol and this estradiol exerts the negative feedback effect on the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus so that is how the follicular phase has been regulated now in the mid cycle or just before the ovulation the lh surge has been occurred when the critical level of estradiol is reached of at least 200 picograms per milliliter of plasma now when this much level of the estradiol has been reached then it exerts a positive effect on the gonadotropin releasing hormone secretion by the hypothalamus and fsh and lh secretion is increased by the anterior pituitary gland at the mid cycle at the time of or just before the time of ovulation there is increased in the level of estradiol up to 200 picograms per milliliter of the plasma this much level of the estradiol exerts positive feedback mechanism on the hypothalamus as well as anterior pituitary gland so there is highly increase in the fsh and lh and ultimately it stimulates the ovary lh surge occurs and ovulation occurs now post ovulatory phase that is also known as luteal phase in the luteal phase the same thing 
the hypothalamus releases the gonadotropin releasing hormone it stimulates the anterior pituitary gland and anterior pituitary releases the fsh and lh that stimulate the ovary in the post ovulatory phase or the luteal phase here there is a one hormone that is the progesterone has been released from the ovary and this exerts the negative feedback effect on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland so there is decrease in the gonadotropin releasing hormone as well as fsh and lh concentration in the luteal phase or the post ovulatory phase now the applied aspect what is anovulation when there is absence of ovulation during the menstrual cycle the condition is known as anovulation and the cycle or the menstrual cycle that is known as unovulatory menstrual cycle so i hope through this video now you understand the ovarian cycle if you like this presentation please try to share it with your batch groups friends and colleagues